My family speaks a particular linguistic formula of 1990s Little Saigon Vietnamese. We just moved here. Tôi mới mua đây. The market has a sale: five pounds of apples for one buck. Chợ đang có sale: năm pound táo cho một buck. Today is Christmas. Hôm nay là Christmas. It's a familial language of living history, and it was a language that I was raised on. Before I found my time structured by recess and English grammar, I absorbed the world around me. I helped my mom cut away the loose threads of her day's garment work. I watched Vietnamese children's karaoke, thai chè, and learned about sweeping the house, playing with fireworks, and cooking for your grandparents. Sitting cross-legged on the floor, I traced my mom's handwriting of my name, Nguyễn Thị Kim Man. Utterances of sacrifice, duty, and reputation inserted themselves between meals and commercial breaks. These were the Vietnamese words that guided my every day. But then I started to learn a new language at school. This language had other rules, speech patterns, and ideals. It was unlike the Catholic creeds my grandmother whispered or the ethics of family forever first. New authority figures who did not look like my parents told me, "Good job." You can be whoever you want to be. Everyone is different. Cindy has a flat nose. Teacher, you plagiarized. Your English essay is too good. Classmate, you are a communist. And I would say, no, I'm not. I came to America on a boat. And then everyone would laugh. A different set of pronouns and names governed my existence. At school, I was a neutral pronoun I. And the newly chosen name Cindy Win, I would enunciate slowly each day during roll call. Yes, it's okay. You don't need to bother with my real name. At home, I was child gone, and the affectionate term of endearment, little one, Ba. I never questioned if I was fluent in English or Vietnamese until that stale suburban afternoon during my third grade parent-teacher conference. When my mom screeched, "My children talk English good. She not ESL. She do good job in school." I remember it very clearly as a screech because all the little hairs along the back of my neck stood on end. I replayed in my head not what my mother said, but how she said it. I wanted her to stop speaking because it resembled the scratching of distorted static. The slow undoing of Velcro shoes, something I yearned for during Catholic confession, something I feared. She sounded foreign, bizarre, comedic, even. That day, I learned that the English language could be something called broken.